Let's open up this pit. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, Adam? My name is Adam Zuniga. I am the curator and host of Not Best Beer Pit Live. Today we are talking and tasting with none other than Dan Camp, the owner, founder, head brewer, and self-proclaimed Simeon Overlord at Metal <laughs> Monkey Brewing. That is in Romeoville, Illinois. Hails, Dan. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me, Adam. How you doing today? I'm well. I'm well. It's my oh, yeah. pleasure, man. A um, couple things. Like, so I feel like we might have first crossed paths at Decibel Magazine and Metal and Beer Fest in Philly. Is that correct? I believe we did. Yeah. I, if even if just briefly, uh, yeah, we were we were serving up on the second level there and uh, had a wonderful time. Hope uh, someday we could go back to one of their fests and uh, serve for them again or with them again because that was such a great time. Most metal. Uh, the Hell not yeah. the not best beer pit tastings live. It is a great chance for us to talk here with bands and and bands with breweries. But this is a return to form, man, because it is one on one between you and me, and it's a chance to bring our subscribers to the not best beer pit in live to ask you a question if we might have some later on. But all that absolutely that's good. Are you ready? Let's do this. I'm ready. Let's go. Great, man. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the brewery to get started? How did you get into brewing yeah. and when was Metal Monkey founded? Sure. So we, uh, you know, I got into brewing. Uh, it was back in the early 2000s. I, I think 2001 is when I first kind of had an interest in it. Um, and uh, I didn't actually start home brewing in, for a couple of years. I, uh, I got laid off from a job I was working at the time and found out that home brewing was a thing. And I, I never knew people made beer at home before. So I was like, wait, this sounds kind of cool. I, I could do that. Uh, so I read up on it for quite a while. And then, uh, as soon as I, you know, had a job, a steady income could pay my bills again, I uh, started picking up some equipment to start brewing at home. And, uh, it's one of those hobbies that kind of slowly spiraled out of control. And, uh, you know, my, my wife, uh, probably about six years ago, uh, were, she worked in finance at the time. And, you know, we kind of had the idea of opening up a brewery and we're like, well, I, I don't know what's involved. I don't know what I need to do to open a brewery. Uh, so I started looking into it with her. We put together a business plan, uh, which is uh, actually around the time we met Jason, our other business partner, uh, met him through a local homebrew club. And uh, he and I hit it off as far as beer we liked, uh, beer we uh, would like to brew together and uh, music uh, more than anything, I guess. Uh, you know, we're both into metal, have been for most of our lives so it seemed like a natural fit and uh here we are uh five and a half years later now and i'm sitting in the tap room tonight we're open we got a handful of customers over this way uh got all of our production over on this side so uh yeah we're right in the thick of things right now which is badass that's most metal we are happy to be live in your tap room uh, especially since i've never been there in person um tell us a little bit more just about why the name metal monkey how did you come to be the simian overlord and i think you told <laughs> your uh your partner jason is something about hops and awesomeness correct <laughs> yeah he is uh jason james is our director of hops malt and awesomeness nice. uh and uh, you know the the uh official titles like that and simian overlord we kind of figured if we have to have titles we probably shouldn't take ourselves too seriously because that's kind of how we live our lives. You know, uh, we're into heavy music, but we like to goof around and have fun, which is kind of the whole metal monkey vibe that we have here is, you know, we, we enjoy stupid jokes as much as we do great music. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, the, the name actually came about from a, uh, a, a former partner of ours. When we first opened, uh, he liked collecting monkeys, like little figurines of monkeys, stuffed monkeys, anything monkey related. So we kind of mashed together our love of metal and his love of monkeys and became Metal Monkey. And like I said, it kind of kind of fits who we are with the whole idea of not taking ourselves too seriously, but still enjoying everything heavy and awesome. I love it, man. I, I really appreciated it. On the last Not Best Beer Pit Live, we had Wayfinder and Red Fang, and they had put out a craft malt oh, nice. together. And that was just likewise a recurring theme. You know, we take our beer seriously, our music seriously, our art seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously and we want to have fun with it. Exactly. And, yeah. Their life's too short to do it otherwise. <laughs> much agreed. You'll find that from metal people across the board, man. Metal people are good people. And I'm glad that you're having fun with it at Metal Monkey. Um, Absolutely. 
before we actually get into the tasting, and I want to show people what we're looking at, they can see it on the screen as well. But this is, of course, Boule IPA. Double dry hops. Yeah, we got IPA. Before we get into the beer, can you tell us the story behind it? What inspired the name, the recipe formulation, all that good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Well, the beer name itself, it, it came from an album from Ghost, uh, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, their uh, song Goulet slash Zombie Queen was kind of the inspiration for the name of the beer. Uh, the beer itself, we, uh, you know, from the time we opened and honestly from the time that Jason and I met, uh, we were both huge into IPAs. We, I, even still at the end of the day, I gravitate towards a nice hoppy beer. And uh, we've gone through a million different types of IPAs. And this one just is one of our better selling ones, which is great because it's one of my favorites i i absolutely love citra hops uh from the first time i had a beer with citra hops which was uh actually zombie dust from three floyds uh mm. another metal brewery not too far down the road here from us right over the border in indiana um i've been in love with the the citra hop so you know when we tried making an all citra hopped ipa it just hit every note for us and uh millions of well, maybe not millions, but dozens of our adoring fans. Uh, but to the point where we've uh, we've brewed this beer, canned this beer, basically since we started uh, packaging beer uh, to sell outside of the brewery. So it's been a big hit and remains to be, which is fantastic. That's excellent. Truly excellent. So when you say it's the co closest thing you have uh, to like a core beer, you brew it regularly, you produce it regularly? Absolutely, yeah. We've got a, a couple of core beers. Uh, we keep this on regularly as well as uh, we've got an Irish red ale called the Ellis Redding, uh, a Pilsner called Romeo Pills, because we're in Romeoville, we had to pay tribute to our hometown here. Uh, and, uh, you know, just a couple other nice, uh, drink, very drinkable beers that just a lot of people are really into. So it's been cool to be able to have, uh, have this one as one of our core beers, because we absolutely love the artwork that our artist John came up with for this. It's just a really cool sketch uh, looking design. Uh, it's actually the second label that we've had for this beer. Uh, the first label, uh, like I mentioned, it's a, the beer name comes from a ghost song. Uh, we, the original label looked a little too much like uh, Ghost's first album cover for their, uh, their marketing folks to allow us to keep making without paying some sort of royalties on. So we got a, a, a very nice cease and desist letter from them saying, hey, can you please stop using this label and i obviously i you know we're a small business and uh we we can't afford lawyers like other people can so we were like you know what yeah that's that's fine we'll change the label as soon as we can yeah um i don't know it's not it's not metal that you got to cease and desist but i really appreciate <laughs> the story and the song behind the beer oh I yeah hadn't i hadn't listened to that song in a while and i forgot how much fun and how playful it is so maybe that also oh yeah fits into the theme of metal monkey and your brewery i, and I think it does absolutely for sure i mean that music that song it could have been rocky horror it's like rocky horror on broadway coupled with like zombies <laughs> band, so. it really is yeah and that's that, that's a I, I think another one of the fun qualities of that band as well is just that they can put out music like that and yeah. it's cool to have it in our in our uh in our repertoire of music we play around here yeah, much agreed. All right, and then you also just mentioned the label art. I know Jonathan Grimm does your label art, and I feel like there's also a shout to the Bernie Wrights and the Rest in Peace Bernie on the label. Um, tell us about Jonathan. Absolutely. And uh, tell so, us about uh, Yeah, well, uh, we met John. Um, we were actually putting together a, uh, an artisan market uh, out in our parking lot. I'm pointing this way, like you know where our parking lot is, but trust me, it's over here. <laughs> um, and he reached out asking about um, participating in the, uh, in the event. And uh, we were not the ones that were organizing the artists. Uh, that was another gentleman that's been helping us with all that. But just from the first time meeting him, I was like, this guy, he fits in. He's one of us. He's a, he's a monkey. We, and his art is just fantastic. So we, we've pretty much had him make every label since uh, he started working for us, which I think he's now over 30 different labels for us, which is really cool. Excellent. Excellent. And was Bernie Wrightson an inspiration for him? I know he created a Swamp Thing, I believe. 
Yeah, he was, uh, you know, I, and he, he'd be able to tell you more than, than I would about that, but I know he wanted to do some kind of art as a tribute to him and kind of his style. So that's where this label came from. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Another thing I love about this world of metal and beer, it just includes so much of what I grew up in, and I'm assuming you did as well, but not only heavy music, but comic books, sci-fi, oh, yeah. horror. People have found a way to kind of actually make a job out of this. And exactly. Into their beer, yeah, what a, what, into, their into their brand. I love it. For sure. Yeah. One of the first labels we asked him to do for us was a, uh, it's our coffee brown ale, which... Uh, Jason and I are, and well, I guess most people here are huge Simpsons fans. So yeah. we called the beer up, up and Adam, like a radioactive man's kind of slogan uh, when he jumps into action. So oh we asked John to kind of, kind of make a monkey version of radioactive man bursting out of a cup of coffee. <laughs> and yeah. uh, when, when he came back with the design for that, we we're like, okay, this guy clearly is on the same page as us. So let's keep going with him. Huge Simpsons fan. Maybe you can make a home pig on nuts beer and improve my on it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, on that note, I am thirsty. Before we move to taste the beer, though, I want to bring in, I'm not even going to call him a subscriber anymore. He's basically a co host at this point. <laughs> uh, champion, our returning champion, Eric, uh, he's a subscriber from the Not Best Beer Pit. But he's also taking during these tastings. So let me move over to hit this screen. I want to let everyone know this is another first because I am now the host of Satan, the producer in the Steel Pit Tasting Live. So <laughs> here with me as we work through this for the first time. But let me see if I have Eric here and how it looks in my, once I move over. Perfect. Just a second. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That you even surprised surprise. yourself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> is with us tonight. Um, Eric, can you see us? Can you hear us? I can both see and hear you. Can you Can you hear me? We can see. I can hear you. Yeah, I can see you. You are in the yeah, band now. Move, so, so now, now I'm in the loft. So. <laughs> okay, okay. Appreciate the change in background. Appreciate you joining. And like I said, you're more than a subscriber. You're a co-host at this point. So very much appreciated. <laughs> Very happy um, to be back. Welcome, welcome. Highlight of my week. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Thank you, uh, Dan. I'm gonna pour really idea. I'm gonna pour uh, one for myself too. Then, yeah, I'll join you. Please do, Eric. You do the slam. Let's all Make join them together. Anyone watching at home or through the chat, by all means, join us. I'll try to keep an eye on questions as well. And uh, as I pour the beer, Dan, if you want to walk us through it, let's talk about the aroma the appearance and on to the flavor and ultimately the finish. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, when you open it up, you'll, you'll probably get a little burst of the, uh, the smell of the hops in there. The, uh, like I mentioned before, citra hops are one of my favorites, even to this day uh, that, you know, they, they've got a very pronounced, like kind of grapefruit uh, or maybe like a nondescript kind of citrusy type aroma, like a grapefruit, lime, tangerine, kind of all, mashed up together in a, in a pit, more yeah. or less. Uh, a little bit of tropical fruit flavor you get sometimes out of it. Um, and uh, it, it'll, it's got a really nice kind of orange color to it. Um, a little bit hazy. Uh, it's not what you would uh, call a hazy IPA or, or a New England style IPA. This is a uh, more, more or less pays tribute to the kind of the West Coast IPAs that we grew up drinking. Not, obviously not the clarity that you'd find out of those, uh, which more or less a uh, result of the double dry hopping that we've done in the beer, which is basically we, we when you're finishing off the beer after the primary fermentation's done, we'll add hops into the beer to extract more aroma from them than bitterness. Uh, so during the brewing process, we, we hop the beer for uh, bitterness primarily, but then some aroma as well. Then the act of dry hopping, you get way more of the aroma out of it. So uh, we actually dry hop the beer twice to get an extra hit of that citrusy punch that we like. And, uh, you know, as opposed to a lot of the New England IPAs or uh, hazy IPAs you see out there, this one will still have a very pronounced bitterness to it. So uh, I like I like bitterness. Uh, we, we like bitterness. And so we want to make sure our beers are nice and bitter. Like a moth to the flame. Now don't feel Absolutely. 
everything you just described from the hop profile and the double dry hopping, which I want to talk more about. I mean, that's that's a immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even have to pour it into a glass. I can smell it immediately when I open the can. It just for jumps sure, out. yeah, it jumps out like hop candy, man. Um, and I appreciate that it's, you know, it's it, it's it's unfiltered. So it absolutely, not, yeah, we not hazy but unfiltered. That's an important distinction as well. Um, let's drink it. Walk through the flavor, please. For sure, yeah. When take a sip, you when you smell it as you're kind of taking it in your mouth you'll notice that citrusy punch again you'll get a little bit of sweetness out of it you'll definitely get the bitterness kind of toward the back of your tongue there uh from again it's all all citra hops in this beer so citra's doing the bittering citra's there for all the aromatics as well uh oh, wow. you do get a little bit of sweetness from some of the malt that we use in there it's a the grain bill for this beer is pretty pretty simple uh there's a you know primarily just a two row barley that we use as a base for most of our beers. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, uh, crystal malt in there that gives it just a touch of sweetness, touch more color. And uh, then we've got uh, uh, some other grain in there just to give it, help it uh, kind of keep that frothy head on the top, uh, you yeah. know, keep that lasting a little bit longer. Uh, the carbonation kind of helps get more of that aromatics in your mouth, uh, as well as a little bit more of that bitterness as well. So, um, yeah. hmm. interesting. Yeah. So yeah, the color is definitely coming from the, the crystal malt, the little bit especially grain that you say. Just you yeah, just a tiny bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, for example, I've got another beer next to me here that's almost the same grain bill, but without that particular grain and way, way, way less hop. So yeah. you can totally tell there's a big difference that that makes there. Uh, very mild sweetness from the grain and a little bit mm -hmm. of from the alcohol to complement it. Is this what, it's just under double IPA territory, right? It is, yeah. Actually, uh, so while while everything was uh, kind of locked down, whatnot, uh, or you know, I guess we were more at a limited capacity. We were. It was basically Jason and I working, doing everything here, uh, from you know working behind the bar, doing deliveries, brewing all the beer, everything we usually had other people here to do. So I got stuck brewing this beer myself uh, one day just because of uh, limited staff and uh, all that. So. Uh, came out a little higher in alcohol than expected, but I, I'm never going to complain about that. Um, and I think, I think, uh, because of some of the supply shortages we had, uh, one of the grains we got was actually a different menu or a different, uh, supplier manufacturer, I guess, uh, than the normal ones that we, a uh, normal one we would use in this beer. Mm -hmm. Uh, not that it makes a huge difference in the flavor, but definitely the extract that we got out of it turned out a little bit stronger than in anticipated usually we aim for right about seven percent with this one this is a little closer to eight percent though okay excellent and then like you said it finishes uh surprisingly bitter it's a little bit of a yeah. punch in the mouth which i appreciate and really enjoy awesome i'm glad to hear that because that's that's what i like in an ipa honestly that's yeah. that's what i go for when i go drink an ipa is that bitterness it is a it is a dry and bitter finish, and I think just kind of like a that much more of an interpretation of the West Coast IPA style, like you mentioned. So this for is for sure. I've been dying and waiting to drink this beer. Everyone is a fan <laughs> of Citra hops. Um, Eric, I want you to chime in here uh, as a home brewer. I'm sure you have your own take on Citra, and we keep returning the idea of West Coast versus East Coast, unfiltered versus hazy. So tell us, uh, what do you smell? What do you taste? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you said it perfectly, especially, you know, with, uh, you know, the kind of grapefruit and then a little bit of lime kind of, you know, it's like a, as you're drinking it, it just kind of keeps going through all these different stages. It's it's pretty uh, pretty amazing how you did that. And <laughs> like you said, it's the, the bitterness is kind of like the piney West Coast, you know, mm -hmm. and then then you still get with the citra is that kind of juice you know not the juice bomb but you know close to it <laughs> right you get you definitely right get a lot of those fruity flavors but yeah it's not a not a juice bomb per se but yeah the flavors are all there <laughs> yeah absolutely and it was really cool like it, it, uh adam you said right in the beginning it's like that aroma as soon as you open the can <laughs> it's like it's the best smell in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice because it is like hot candy. It's this full bouquet yes. of mm -hmm. citrus on the nose. And you wouldn't expect it to finish as bitter as it does. And if you like both those qualities, this beer has it. For yeah, sure. And, and it yeah. smooths out too at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you get that little bit of bitterness and then it kind of smooths back out. I really thought it was a double IPA. I, yeah. 
I cheated and drank one this weekend. <laughs> and no, I gave it to my neighbor. <laughs> yeah. hard, I know it's hard to wait because like fresh is always <laughs> best with IPAs. Yeah, no, I've been I've been dying to try it. Um and God, you hit it, man. Now it's like all I taste is kind of like fresh lime <laughs> with my tongue. Like that's an excellent descriptor. That's um, awesome. Um, yeah. I want yeah, to I gave it to my uh to my neighbor and we were gonna split it, but it, just because I opened the fridge and he saw the can, he's a he's an artist and has lots of tattoos and everything. And he saw the can and he was like, "I don't care what that is, open it," because I just <laughs> want to see the can. So he was like studying the the art on the can. And he That's loved great. it. He said it, he said it was one of the coolest ones he's ever seen. So it's it's most metal when the beer in the can like lives up to the label. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and yeah. He also <laughs> enjoyed the beer too. So <laughs> even better, even better. Uh, Dan, I want to ask you a little bit more about uh, Citra. Just, you know, do you feel... Do you mm -hmm. feel so the beer is Citra start to finish. Um, yep. From, from bittering through dry hopping, correct? Exactly, yep. So maybe tell us a little bit about, first of all, your dry hopping techniques, like how you do it at what stage of the process, and why did you pick Citra start to finish for this beer? Sure, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, when we dry hop, uh, we'll, uh, when we put the beer into the fermenter uh, to ferment, uh, we'll let it go through basically, you know, the entire fermentation process, the entire primary fermentation, I should say, um, at, which takes on this beer usually about a week, week and a half or so. Um, and then we will, uh, we've got a, uh, I was going to say I'd get in the shot here, but you can't, it's outside <laughs> right now. Uh, but we've got a big ladder that we take up to the top of the tank. So we, and a giant funnel we attach to dump the uh, dry hops into the tank, uh, which is always kind of terrifying. Uh, if you look up on like online and a lot of places every few months, you'll see somebody post a video of a fermenter that explodes with, you know, just <laughs> foam and stuff everywhere when they uh, go to do something like that because they can't seal it up in time to stop it from releasing all the CO2 from the beer. Uh, it's basically like putting, uh, uh, you know, 20 pounds of Mentos into a giant <laughs> vat of uh, Diet Coke and waiting to see what happens. So uh, we actually got smart a couple months ago and bought a big uh, four inch uh, uh, valve to put on the top of the tanks. So when we're dry hopping, we could actually open and close that valve really easily rather than fumbling around on the top of the ladder with a, a clamp and a gasket trying to make sure we get it all sealed up before it starts spraying everyone with foam and destroying the beer in the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is most metal. So I've heard you know, like dry hopping. It's kind of any moment after flame out, like any moment after the boil could be considered a dry hop. That could be a little misleading, but are you saying it's all done at the very end of the process after primary and secondary fermentation? And it's this um, gravity. Well, I, I, I guess I should say that, yeah, we do, we do add some hops into the kettle as well. Aside from the bittering hops uh, at the end of the boil, we do add some hops uh, within the last uh, five, uh, the last ten minutes, the last five minutes, and then right at flame out as well. So they, this is just uh, toward the end of the boil, and then into uh, fermentation and post fermentation, we're just smacking it with even more citra the whole way along the line there. That's excellent. And tell us why did you choose um, why did you choose citra hops? Uh, well, I, uh, like I said, I, ever since I had uh, zombie dust from, from Three Floyds for the first time, mm -hmm. I've fallen in love with the hop and I've uh, wanted to make a beer with that hop. And, uh, you know, for a while there, it was really hard to come by. But uh, early on, when we first opened the brewery, we actually got in on a couple of uh, hop contracts that we were able to get Citra pretty regularly for a few years. So when it was in short supply, we still had plenty of it coming. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, so rather than, you know, either sell it or, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know what else you'd do with it. Um, we decided to just double down on making this beer with it because we just absolutely love it. Excellent. Yeah. Citra, I mean, when it's used well or used correctly, I, I mean, it is a super hot. I mean, it definitely is. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of buzz around Citra, and I feel like a lot of people excuse bad beers with Citra and say, oh, it's just Citra being patty or having this kind of like, there is there is some of that i've had that before and i've heard from some other uh brewers around here that you know depending on which crop you got of the citra it or what part of the fields even that it came from you might get a uh, drastically different flavor but we've gotten pretty lucky so far with everything that we've had. 
Whoa, you got a person back Bartender here. Susie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so two things. I want to go to Eric, uh, but I do want to give a shout if they're still watching. Um, Derek, Brian, Tony, I saw you in the chat. Uh, thank you for the shout out. Keep it metal. These are friends of mine from New York City. They cast and crew nice. the show, the six most metal breweries. So certainly oh, yeah. them tuning in tonight and supporting the Beer Pit as well as Metal Monkey. So we have friends oh, thank you guys. on the Etherweds and Twitch land. Um, Eric, any questions just as a home brewer for Dan while you're here, while we have him? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, at scaling it down to the home homebrew level, but you mm -hmm. know, working with, I, I guess you know, citrus very easy to get, but it's it's not easy to perfect, <laughs> especially yeah, yeah. at the homebrew level <laughs> uh, to get the flavors that you want and that kind of thing out of them. Um, any tips and tricks to do that? Honestly, I, I'd say probably start out sparingly with it. Like, don't use too much. You could easily overpower a beer with too much, I think. And it's definitely something, if you haven't used a lot or not not having used, like, you know, like it, as a primary hop, right. you could get some of that cattiness. Uh, so just try to scale it back a little, even though you'll probably want to go full force into it um, and go from there. You know, you could always... You can always dry hop it again later, like when we double dry hop this one. Uh, but you can't take it back out if you put too much. In. <laughs> nice. Um, so, how many different? Like, are there different? Um, I know there's all these different kind of uh, ways to get the the hop, the same hop, but just different um, kind of makeups of it to get it in oh, there. Yeah. Do you use any of those other like cryo or like the? We haven't up to this hops point. And that kind um, of stuff. You know, I, I uh, my wife and I, we grow hops in our backyard. So oh, nice. a lot of times we will, uh, unfortunately, citrus one that's kind of a patented <laughs> trade trademark. So, you know, even getting yeah, a uh, plant in mind. that is, that's what we've got too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So every year we'll make a, we'll make a wet hopped beer with the uh, cascade oh, cool. from our backyard. Uh, but yeah, we, with Citra, um, we just get the pelletized form. We, we haven't oh. had a chance, unfortunately, to mess around with like the cryo hops or any of the other crazy new varieties of uh or ways of yeah. extracting those flavor compounds from the hops i'd really yeah, love to like one of these cryo days. and resin and like a lot of different yeah these new things you know, we, i should say we do use uh i think we did use a, a citra uh extract ones uh um, mm. in one of our other uh, uh triple ipas that we make um but oh, cool. it's not something that comes up terribly regularly uh right yeah it's and a, a lot of times if we do use a hop extract it's because we're a pretty small brewery and we don't want to go adding, you know, 50 pounds of hops into the kettle because <laughs> it'll soak up that much more of the liquid. And we want to make sure we get as much beer out of it as we can while still getting that flavor that we want out of it. Uh, I will say, Dan and Eric, you're definitely, you have some fans out there and you're making everyone thirsty. Uh, Tony <laughs> Beacon 666 says, dig the beer metal monkey. This is Tony Bellis from KCBC Brewing. Oh, in thank you, Tony. City. Iron Eddie three three three, which has to be the best handle I've seen. On <laughs> yes, I, I think awesome. I know who that is. <laughs> Metal monkey, all capitals, with the horn. So you're doing the <laughs> right thing. All this and talk, Tony. Thank you guys. All this talk of citrus. Can you tell us? Uh, sometimes we always like to break it down and say, well, it's the equivalent of like X amount of pounds per barrel of X hop. Can you give us a, that kind of estimation, like how much? Citra is in every barrel of the beer, which is the equivalent of, the equivalent of two kegs all said and done. Yeah, I think uh, with this one, it's probably about three pounds of, uh, of citra hops per barrel, okay. uh, which is about a pound and a half per keg. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know the exact breakdown per can, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be really a couple ounces at least, I think. <laughs> I was going to be super impressed if you could do that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, if I was a little quicker with the keyboard, I could have pulled up the calculator, but oh, yeah. it's been a long day. So yeah. we, we appreciate you being here. And like typically, I think three to four pounds per barrel of any hop is a pretty healthy dose. So that it's is a, yeah, it's it's a good bit, especially when those citra prices were a lot higher. We it it, it hurt to make this beer a few days, or it hurt the the wallet, or I guess. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> did, did you guys run into anything? Any shortages during? the past year 
Um, yeah, we ran into can shortages, mostly money oh, oh. shortages. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're kind of digging ourselves out of that mess right now. But, um, you know, what? Uh, the, the tap room has really turned around in the last few months. Uh, we've been doing a lot more live shows here now that we could have people back inside. So we've got a lot of local bands coming in here. Uh, oh, nice. really you set cool. up for live shows in your tap room? We do, yeah. We, uh, a few years back, we doubled our space that we have here. So we went from about 3,000 square feet to 6,000. And uh, the other half of the uh, of uh, the new space, or half of the new space is used for storage. The other half is an expansion of our tap room. And uh, we built a stage over there and uh, have a local uh, sound guy that he, he makes our little concrete box sound amazing. <laughs> I don't know how he does it, but shout out to Don there, because he's awesome. Hell yeah. Um, and yeah, we, so we've been having live shows uh, couple times a month now and it's been phenomenal just to see live music again that was uh one of the big things i missed uh during the uh shutdowns yeah yeah likewise no i'm i'm so happy that bars and breweries and tap rooms and venues are reopening um i definitely want to talk more about music with you as well and eric i'm gonna, yeah. i want to leave you in the i want to leave you in the on the screen and in the chat here, man, because I think if I touch anything, I might break it. So let's just keep this going. Um, so participate whenever you want. Feel free to ask questions whenever you want. Um, Ice Mammoth out there in Twitch land just sent a huge... <laughs> He's very happy with beer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's talk about music after geeking out about hops a little bit. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Dan, just the connection for you personally between craft beer and heavy metal. Yeah, there, I mean... Well, I've mentioned them before. I'll, I'm sure I'll mention them again, but Three Floyds, they're kind of like the archetypal beer metal kind of brewery in the area uh, and maybe throughout the nation. But, um, you know, ever since I got into beer, they were like one of my favorites. Um, uh, as far as metal goes, though, I've been listening to metal my whole life. Um, I still remember digging out my dad's old Black Sabbath records in the basement when I was a kid and putting those on and just being blown away by the music. And so I've, uh, you know, I, I've ever since I was old enough, I guess, been going to metal shows and, you know, hanging out with metal musicians, other metal people that I like. You know, we've done collaborations with a number of metal bands at this point, um, which is actually how we got involved with the uh, Decibel Fest in the first place. So that's pretty cool. Um, we did a uh, collaboration with uh, Armored Saint, which was amazing. That was one of the highlights of anything was, uh, you know, we, I, I, I've been a fan of them since I was pretty young, probably still in high school or so. And, uh, you know, to have uh, John Bush walk up to me at a beer fest and say, hey, where's our table at? Was like, wait, how the hell do you know who I am? <laughs> like, I'm just a guy that makes beer, like, and you're, you know, but, you know, and so that, you know, the connection to, between beer and metal, it's, uh, we find a lot of crossovers. There's so many people out there that are, that are into metal who like beer that, you know, the music uh, and the artwork that we associate with our, our beer, it, it goes along with the music, you know? Um, so it's just all kind of very synergetic. I actually, you saw uh, our bartender, Susie, who just walked by a minute ago. She's uh I got I to gotta give a shout out to her. She's the vocalist for this band, Black Road, who just played at a brewery last weekend. They're a local doom band. Uh, they're fucking phenomenal. Wait, can I swear on here? I'm sorry. Oh, you can swear all you want. Man. Okay. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> I can just drive the point home. Hell um, yeah. Shout out to what was the band? Is it Black Road? Uh, Black Road, yeah. yeah. So they, you know, uh, like I said, they're a local band. We, you know, when we when we have live music in the brewery, we try to get local bands in here, uh, primarily local original bands. Uh, we do do some cover bands from time to time. We have a, a down tribute band in the area that they've been in here a number of times. They're awesome. Uh, well, we just had a Black Sabbath tribute band in here last weekend as well. Uh, and another local band called Pale Horsemen. They're, you know, all just phenomenal bands. Uh, uh, there's a lot of great music in this area, and it's a shame that a lot of places only showcase cover bands because uh, we want to hear original music. We, you know, as much as it's cool to hear covers of songs, we want to hear what the artists are actually producing and give them a, a place that they can showcase that. Yeah, of course. Uh, cover bands. I mean, it's 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 its own culture, which is really interesting. Uh, I like being an actor, man. You're living someone else's life. 
But once you start looking for local bands, I mean, there's no shortage of an underground scene, and I'm glad there's an outlet for it at Metal Monkey. Absolutely. Uh, one simple sound out there in Twitchland wants to know with live music making a return. Are there any tours or shows you're looking forward to attending? Uh, oh, geez. For you, Dan, <laughs> for Eric, you're free to chime in as well. Oh, I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. Well, um, you know what? Uh, there's a couple shows I, I've actually got tickets to now that I uh, that were rescheduled, or one was rescheduled from uh, prior to the shutdowns. Is uh, Testament? They're coming to town soon, and I I could watch them any day of the week live. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that show. Uh, another one I picked up tickets for not too long ago was uh, Mr. Bungle. Uh, I've yeah. been a fan of them since high school. I'm, I, I've been a big fan of uh, of uh, Mike Patton's vocals for most of my life. So I've never seen him live. So I, I, when the tickets for Mr. Bungle went on sale, I was like, there is no way I'm missing that freaking show because yeah. it's time, you know. And uh, God, what was the other show I just got tickets for? Oh, there uh, another band. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I've got a good quote in the chat here from Derek Six MMB saying it'll it'd be cool to see down <laughs> the down cover band since Bill and Animal tours with five other bands regularly. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're they're great. If you're ever out in the Chicago area, look them up. They're called Nola N O L A. Oh, hell yeah! Uh, a couple more. Uh, I'm gonna say this is Chalky underscore. Keep sending us fire marks. So I'm assuming we're heading in the right. Pretty well with fire and. <laughs> Oh, how to say this? You chick 06 says hi from North Carolina, Dan, and sends you a guitar, a monkey, <laughs> and a beer emoji. So, oh, nice. Hey, hey North Carolina. How are you doing too, out there so. in North Carolina? <laughs> and I believe I'm sure I'm based in North Carolina. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure right. uh, uh, Iced Mammoth in the chat, too. He's in North Carolina as well. He's a, he's a buddy of mine. Well, look at that. So take it over. <laughs> I'm gonna say a, a perfect right? being the uh, the producer and the voice of Satan for these shows, or at least I have more visibility into the chat. Oh, and uh, I chick 06, you chick 06. Who knows? Uh, it says yes, you do. <laughs> oh yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right, cool. Awesome, awesome. Oh, that's that's his better half. Very cool. Oh yeah, well, I, I know I know her then as well. <laughs> One simple sound is currently based in North Carolina as well. So there's a lot of North Carolina love yeah, beating in the house tonight. That is metal. <laughs> uh, I want to keep talking about this. Uh, we hit upon it just the connection between beer and metal, uh, but maybe you can also tell us, like, in addition to like what tours you're looking forward to. And one simple sound, just since you're listening out there, this will be the year that I see <laughs> you alive, that I play. It's all coming back. Um, <laughs> Dan, can you tell us what albums are playing in the Blue House recently? What are you listening to while you brew? What do you play regularly for that matter? What gets you through the day? Yeah, we, you know, we play uh, a lot of, I mean, we just kind of run the gamut as far as metal goes. Uh, right now, we've been listening to a lot of uh, doom metal. Uh, had Graveyard, Mono Lord a lot uh, the last couple of days. Awesome. Um, you know, Pantera's are always a staple here. We've got uh, one regular who's just crazy about Pantera. So we always put put some Pantera on when he's walking in the door and leave it going the, most of the time he's in here. Uh, you know, uh, me personally, like I, I, I've been doing a lot of deliveries lately and I haven't been listening to a lot of music while I'm driving around. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and things like that. But, um, you know, uh, another... Uh, tour, I guess, that I'm hoping will get rescheduled at some point that I had tickets for before the tour was uh, Devin Townsend. He's, uh, I'm a huge fan of him and yeah, his music and that's cool. all the crazy crap that he does. So uh, if he comes back through, I will be there in a heartbeat. But that's uh, lately been my kind of go-to music Yeah, is uh, just something from Devin, uh, whether it's like the really crazy, heavy, strapping young lad stuff or some of the more melodic, uh, just laid back kind of stuff that he does. So, nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, out there in Twitch land, uh, it looks like it's pronounced E I U chick. <laughs> uh, Derek at 650 <laughs> says you can never have enough Pantera, so you're on the same page there, Dan. Hell yeah. I think a couple things worth mentioning. I, just where you are in Romeoville, that is just outside of Chicago proper, correct? Yeah, we're about uh, 30 miles south of the city. Um, so, yeah, we're uh, 
right next to Joliet, Bolingbrook, uh, if, if anyone out there is familiar with the area. Uh, we're in a little industrial park, so we're a little hard to find unless you're looking for us. Uh, yeah. Unless it's on a night we've got a live show, then we'll have a big sign out, out on the major road that says live music tonight. Um, so yeah, if you look us up, uh, uh, definitely is the best way to go. Uh, if you want to look us up on Facebook, that's probably where the most updates get posted, uh, just because it's uh, the platform we have the, the most uh, followers on, and yeah. it's the easiest for us to get out to everybody through there. I feel like so the Midwest, like Illinois in particular, but the Midwest probably has the strongest concentration of metal breweries just by sheer number and volume. I, I think you might be right. Yeah, we, you know, we uh, talking about the Decibel Fest earlier. Uh, we've done the fest with uh, uh, Wake Brewing. They're out in the Quad Cities. Yeah. So right on the Illinois Iowa border, uh, we've had uh, we've got Sound Growler not too far from us. They're another great metal brewery. Oh, yeah. Uh, like I mentioned before, Three Floyds, uh, they're right over the border. War Pigs, uh, affiliated with Three Floyds there. But they've, uh, yeah, we, we've got a ton of people who just love metal out here. And for that matter, no shortage of local bands. Like once you start exactly. the local scene, no shortage of metal bands throughout Illinois. Oh, my God. It, yeah, it was great. It was great last weekend when we had uh, Pale Horseman and Black Road playing. There were people from probably six other bands in here that night that who, who we've all had play here before at one point or other, yeah. uh, except for one of them. Their, their show got canceled just when all the shutdowns started. So I let them know that they still owe us a show. Deal. So. <laughs> Why do you think that is? It's the number of metal bands and metal breweries concentrated around Illinois and throughout the Midwest. Why is that? You know, I, if you ever look at like uh, like the Scandinavian countries, like who have all the really cool metal scenes and stuff, I think it's the shitty weather we have in the winter. I agree. <laughs> I mean, yeah. hibernation. I don't, know, I don't know how people right. feel this. I mean, I was a big fan of a lot of the Seattle bands growing up, and they mm -hmm. said they said the same thing. You know, it's like the yeah. kept us inside making music. So when you're talking about even more extreme weather in the Midwest with the snow, just like Northern Europe, it makes a lot of sense. Man. Oh God, it's yeah, it it gets brutal out there. Like I, you know, a few years back we had a a really really awful cold spell and. I, I had to actually go up on the roof of the brewery to check on one of our pieces of equipment that was up there. And I had like 10 layers on and I was still like frozen to the bone. Like I, if you don't have to go out in the weather like that, stay home and write <laughs> brutal fucking music. Totally. <laughs> yeah. That is good advice. Be safe, stay home, make metal, write brutal fucking music. Yes, right? exactly. But yeah. Um, I think that's a good motto to live by. Totally. Totally. Uh, <laughs> The same for you for like beers coming up. Can you tell us what mm -hmm. else is brewing at Metal Monkey? What beers do you have coming out soon? What else does the future hold? Yeah, we've got uh, a handful of new beers coming up soon, or maybe not a handful, but uh, we're, we're it, it seems weird to talk about it already, but we're going to be brewing our Oktoberfest beer uh, next week. Uh, it's you know, a seasonal beer. We, we, and it seems like everybody tries to get their Oktoberfest out earlier and earlier every year. Uh, but we're, we're trying to just stick with the, uh, you know, tradition and get it out in time for Oktoberfest, but we want to make sure it's properly made. So we're brewing yeah. it next week. Uh, we've got a nice collaboration that we've done for the last few years, uh, with our friends at Will County Brewing, which is not too far from us. Uh, it's called Pinochle Otters. It's a Pina Colada, uh, hazy IPA. That's oh, going to be a cool one. We we just tapped a strawberry wheat beer today that we've been making the last few years uh, called Driveway Drinking that was inspired by just kind of hanging out on the driveway and drinking with the neighbors. So <laughs> that's a fun beer. Um, uh, going back to some of the uh, more metal themed stuff, we've got a, uh, a green tea IPA that we've done every year uh, for the last three years like that me. we uh, do in collaboration with the band the skull they're another doom metal band from the area yeah. uh the former members of uh trouble uh and some other dudes i guess <laughs> so they're great guys i uh, can't wait to make the beer with them again um but that's been a great beer they uh, i think uh the line from the song that inspired the beer is all i ever need is green tea and weed so we tried to make a beer that tasted like green tea and weed so 
<laughs> there's a lot of good advice coming out of this this Twitch conversation today. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. Green, green tea and weed, you'll live forever. So, <laughs> Dan, have you guys, yeah. have you guys uh, brewed with cannabis before? No, we have not. And, uh, you know, while it's like federally prohibited, we can't because we, we're we're liable to the federal government as well as all the state and local governments. Oh, gotcha. So, um, yeah, that's uh, something that I honestly, I'm not even willing to go near until the federal government changes <laughs> their stance on it because I don't, I don't want to lose our license. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, hard enough getting get a brewery <laughs> open. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So. Is it legal? Yeah, maybe, maybe someday. In Illinois now? Uh, yeah, it is legal uh, re recreationally and medically now as of uh, uh, 2020. So that's there. pretty cool. First step. Yeah, I just uh, happened yeah. to see one in, exactly. in one of the brewing magazines and they were talking about brewing with it. But I don't know if that must be at the homebrew level. I don't know. I've seen some breweries that have done it before. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you get it. away with it. Uh, so and not get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, and yeah, like I said, I'm not, I'm not willing to go down that road. So I'll let other people do that and learn from their mistakes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, is definitely doing it here in California. Um, and it's all oh, yeah. in like local dispensaries, which is really interesting. So, Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, and that's Heineken. So Heineken is right. Doing, that's yeah, wild. Well, I, I had no idea. Yeah, so <laughs> next steps down the road, like hopefully it will mm -hmm. become like more mainstream and they can be a trailblazer. I, I, I'd be I'd be all for it if it happened, uh, just between us and everyone out there in internet land. But um, yeah, I'd I'd be all for it, but I, I'm gonna do it by the books if I do it. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, and those are the beers coming out from Metal Monkey next. And what about just in terms of events and because you're able to host in your tap room and have shows like. Now that everything's reopening, just what else is going mm -hmm. on? Yeah, we've been uh, we've been booking a number of uh, different uh, bands playing. We've got uh, let me take a look at the calendar real quick, actually, because there's some cool ones coming up. Uh, well, at the end of the month uh, on the 30th, I should mention there uh, another brewery up the road from us who we're good friends with. They unfortunately got hit by a tornado uh, a few weeks oh, back, wow. and it destroyed a lot of the building. Um, so uh, uh, we're having a band called The Relevant in here. They're kind of a local hard rock band, uh, uh, friends with a couple of the guys in the band. And we're doing a fundraiser to raise money for their staff who you know, are basically out of a job since the place got hit with a tornado. It's, uh, you know, it was a, kind of a horrible situation that happened, but yeah. we're going to make the best of it, have fun. We've got uh, you know, uh, people donating stuff to raffle off for the night. So that'll be really fun. That's great. Um, you know, we've got a band coming up uh, early August called uh, 20 Watt Tombstone who are coming down from Wisconsin to play here. Another Doom band, uh, which they're great. Uh, they're actually good friends with uh, John Grimm here who does our art. Uh, so he do he's done some designs for them as well for T-shirts and albums, I believe. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we've got, uh, oh, what is the date? The 14th? Yeah, 14th. Uh, we've got a... Uh, a number of bands coming out here. The event is called Midwest Metal Anthem, uh, which is actually something I started attending as a fan ages ago, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, and over the years, we became friends. Uh, Ray, the guy who organizes it, and I, he actually lives in town here, which I found out recently. So uh, we've got five or six local bands playing here, uh, here for that show. Actually, I think one of them is from Wisconsin, so uh, have some more uh, Wisconsin presence here. here. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, just, uh, those are a couple of the cool events we got coming up. Other than that, we've got, uh, you know, we have food trucks that come out on weekends. And uh, occasionally we'll have a, an acoustic artist play on like a Friday night or something when we're, we don't have too much else going on just to have some cool live music playing. Uh, not necessarily metal, but not necessarily not metal. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, you yeah. know. It sounds like Metal Monkey's a big part of the community, and that is what is it, uh, you, That's excellent. It is, and it, it's really cool. Like you know, just looking around the room right now, like I, I see you know, well, my dad's cousin's here right now, which is kind of cool. Like I, <laughs> never see him outside of like family reunions and things. And you know, him and his wife Marie, came down to meet some Marie's friends. And, the operation, that's great. Yeah, and then there's like just you know, just a, all walks of life in here right now. There's a dog in here. There's oh, we have a brewery cat here too. She's sleeping right next to me here. So. <laughs> 
Nice. We, keeps we, the get, mice out. we get everyone in here. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. That's why, honestly, why we got her. Yeah, it's yeah. The, that's the old, like, witch's brew. Like, that's how that whole thing came about. Huh. Oh, is it really? Okay. Yeah, that's why uh, uh, supposedly they were, like, the original brewers. Okay. That's why they have the big cauldron, and that they—that's where they would brew in there. So they that's, were the. That seems reasonable. Wait, hold yeah, on a sec. Were, let me <laughs> let me get her here. Get the cat. Um, She's gonna make an appearance. <laughs> looking at the. She is. Here. I'm gonna I'm She's gonna like, games again. Uh, but chalky underscore keeps giving us not only fires but now like the horns emoji. Now some horns too. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna. So Dan, here, your name Amarillo. You chicks, says Dan. We would like to donate and message us with, with the way we can get back to you. I ran into someone oh, awesome. that had been to Metal Monkey. I had my jacket on, and he stopped me. So that's awesome. That's this cool. is. They know who you wow. are. <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I know. I know who this is now. Now, good. <laughs> good. And thank you for sharing the cat with us, and thank you for sharing the. Oh, absolutely. With us. I am going to bring I, it back to this because it is gorgeous in the glass, man. <laughs> that yeah. looks great, that glass. We need some of those tiki glasses here. <laughs> yeah. It's my, my official tasting glass until otherwise, but yeah, the beer. <laughs> I love it. It's phenomenal. <laughs> it is most metal. Uh, it's all my favorite things, and I think it does justice to Citra Hop. So thank you very well, thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate hearing that. I'm glad you guys enjoy the beer. And yeah, thank you for having me here. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, before we reach out to Not Best Beer Pit subscribers otherwise and kind of wrap this up, Eric, do you have any other questions for Dan or anything else you want to bring up for the beer pit? Um, actually, no, the only other question I did have actually was, um, about the tea. So do you just, cause I know when I did, I, I brewed with, uh, home brewed with some tea before, um, and got mm -hmm. some, like a local tea shop and, and put it in there and it was like the best thing. It was so great. And That's I never awesome. thought about it. I was like, you know, it's really just, you're steeping it just like you would the tea <laughs> in the boil Pretty kettle. Much, yeah. So. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, that's exactly what we do. It's, uh, we do it okay, so you use the at same the thing. end of the boil. So it, we don't okay. boil it. It's after flame out. We'll put it in. And it, uh, we use a jasmine green tea uh, okay. in that particular beer, which I really love. We use a little bit of honey malt in there, too, which gives it a nice kind of like a oh, cool. cup of tea kind of flavor. Uh, and we also use, uh, I can't remember the hops off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Uh, but I'll get back to you with that. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, but it's got a really nice flavor. The, the the hops complement the tea. The uh, honey malt complements the tea, and it just oh uh, lemon peel too. We put some lemon peel in there as well. Oh, nice. What's the base so it's beer? Just a, um, it's it's an IPA. Um, oh okay. So it it is a hoppy bitter beer, uh, but it, then we uh, like I said got it has the jasmine green tea, which is floral with that nice green tea flavor to it. Uh, then the honey you get on the back end, you get uh, the lemoniness as well. It's a, it's a really nice beer. It doesn't, it wouldn't jump out at you as an IPA if you just took a sip of it, but yeah. you can kind of tell it has that IPA heritage, I guess. Very cool. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. Um, no problem. Yeah, of course. From one simple sound out there in Twitch land, got to bail, keep it metal. Um, I think those are wise words and well wishes. So thank you for joining One Simple Sound. Yeah, um, thank, you. thank you. And for you, Dan, and for Metal Monkey, what do you want to say to Not Best Beer Pit subscribers out there uh, that have Goulet in their current box and in their hands right now? Yeah, I would say thank you so much for picking up the beer. I hope you enjoyed as much as we enjoy making it and getting it out to you guys. Uh, if you're in the uh, Chicagoland area, check us out, please. Uh, we'd love to have you come out. We'd love to show you around the tap room and uh, stay fucking metal. Stay fucking metal. <laughs> ha, ha. Wise words. Never true a word spoken. Um, that is post metal. Yeah. I think my biggest takeaway from the beer, I'm going to say now, um, another one of these, and I would most definitely be buzzed if I'm not already. So I think it's worth it on multiple levels. Yeah, yeah. I, I could definitely see that. <laughs> um, you know, here. To your point, Dan, and to you, Eric, always thank you for joining and contributing. Uh, we are so grateful to have you here. And now, thank you for supporting the Not Best Beer Pit. Check it out at notbestbeerpit.com. Uh, check out Not Best Iowa coming up, as well as the road show, because we've got more beer and metal in store for those dates. And I've got to give a shout to all our producers out there, to Chris and Matt, to our graphic designer, Audrey, 
and to Agnes behind the scenes, our retail and distribution company. It makes all of this possible. It's a huge project and we couldn't do it without anyone working behind the scenes tirelessly. So thank you all and above all, thank you to the viewers keeping it metal and the subscribers keeping the dream alive. So I would say keep it metal. Cheers. Hell yeah. Cheers. All right. Thank you guys. So on that note, we're going to do this all again next week. Thank you, Derek, 6MMB. He wants to know, are there any other ways to get Metal Monkey outside of Mount Fest if you're not in Illinois? Are you distributed in any other states? Currently, we are not. I've uh, I've been trying to figure out the best way to do that because we've done a, a handful of different collaborations uh, with bands that have wanted uh, fans who've wanted beers outside of Illinois. Uh, so we have sold some beer out in California as well as when we did the uh, the fest out in uh, Philadelphia, uh, but I currently right now in Illinois is the best way to get our beer, the or the best, the only legal way I could sell our beer. Uh, but we're hoping in the future, uh, especially if we do redo any of these other collaborations that we've done in the past, uh, that we'll have some more national distribution. But not right now, unfortunately. <laughs> Sounds like you have to come to North Carolina with all yeah. the people. I in think there. so. Yeah, we got so many fans out there. <laughs> there was a huge following in North Carolina. Yeah, I'm all great. for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, Derek Six Derek Six M B. Thank you out there in Twitchland. Ice Mammoth is giving us the horns. Thank you very much. Uh, to you, Dan. To you, Eric. To all our subscribers. I will say until next time. We will see you in the pit. Whoa! Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, gentlemen. Thank you so much. See you in the pit. Hey, Don't bring that nice glass in the pit with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers.